The day Jesus died, the moon turned blood red, and NASA's computers may have just proven it actually happened. The sky went dark at noon for three long hours during a full moon, something science said should have been impossible, but now we've got real space data showing a lunar eclipse on that exact day. And it wasn't just any eclipse. Let us pull back the sky like a curtain, because what's hiding behind it might change everything we thought we knew. One strange part of the story, a sudden darkness, middle of the day, and the sky just turned dark. That has kept people wondering forever. What kind of event could do that? Some thought it might have been a solar eclipse. That would make sense, since a solar eclipse brings daytime darkness. It's rare, but not impossible. The problem is that solar eclipses only happen during new moons. The holiday of Passover, when Jesus died, always comes during a full moon. That fact knocks solar eclipses out of the picture. But what if I told you, ancient records hint at something even more terrifying than an eclipse. Something that shouldn't be possible, yet might have happened anyway. Another kind of eclipse, though, does fit. A lunar eclipse happens when the Earth moves between the Sun and the Moon. The Earth's shadow makes the Moon dark, sometimes even red. And lunar eclipses only happen during full moons. That's the same time as Passover. This kind of event might be the one old records talked about. Now jump ahead by thousands of years. Today, astronomers can rewind the skies using computers. They can see what the stars looked like long ago. The people at NASA have done this and their work turned up something wild. A lunar eclipse did happen around the time Jesus was said to have died. This wasn't just any eclipse either. The moon turned a deep red like blood. That would have scared people back then. They didn't know science the way we do. A red moon was a warning, a sign. Something big was happening. This discovery has started a whole wave of questions. Believers are excited. Historians are curious. Even scientists are impressed. There's this crossing of old stories and new knowledge. Two worlds meeting, faith and facts. Can modern science really explain something from so long ago? That's what a lot of people are trying to figure out. To understand the moment better, researchers are diving into every record they can find. Old scrolls, Roman notes, ancient calendars. They're pulling everything together. It's like a mystery game. Each clue leads to another, and the whole picture gets clearer. Not everything is known yet, but the pieces are starting to line up. And the more people look, the more questions they ask. Could this eclipse really be the one from the stories? Could a red moon be the same one that ancient people saw and wrote about? If that's true, then it connects real events in the sky with stories from the Bible. Now imagine the world back then. No street lights, no phones, no science books. The sky was the only big screen anyone had. Everyone looked up. The stars were their clock their map and their storybook. If something strange happened in the sky, it didn't go unnoticed. People talked, people remembered. The lunar eclipse with the red moon would have felt huge. In that moment, the world might have seemed to pause. Time, it seemed, was holding its breath. The red color of the moon might have felt like a cry from the heavens. Not just a moon turning red, but a message, a warning, a sign that something massive had taken place. The Bible mentions this darkness as more than just a sky event. It calls it a moment of sorrow, pain, and great power. Some say the Earth itself felt the weight of what was happening. The skies joined the people in mourning. Scientists today see the lunar eclipse as a tool, a way to date events more exactly. If this eclipse really happened when Jesus died, then it helps pinpoint the moment. It ties faith to a timestamp. The Bible becomes a bit more tied to real-world dates. Of course, not everyone agrees. Some say the match is too neat. Others claim it's just a cool overlap. But it's not about proving or disproving belief. It's about looking deeper into how stories and science mix. And that's what keeps this whole idea alive. People have always looked to the sky for answers. In every culture. In every time. The stars have always been part of our biggest questions. Where did we come from? Why are we here? What happens after we die? The idea that the sky reacted when Jesus died, that's a powerful one. It gives the moment extra meaning. It wasn't just a man dying. It was the world reacting to a soul leaving it. 
This theory about the eclipse keeps popping up in books, videos and talks. Some researchers even timed the exact minute the eclipse would have hit using ancient timelines. They lined it up with Roman history, Jewish customs and gospel records. The date they landed on was the 3rd of April year 33. That's super detailed. And it brings a weight to the story. It's not just a tale, it's part of the calendar. Think about how cool it is that computers and math can rewind the sky. The stars don't lie, they follow a rhythm. If you know the math, you can know the past. And that's what scientists are doing, rolling back the cosmic clock. The blood moon wasn't just a rare event, it may have been one of the biggest signs in human history. Even now people feel something when they see the moon go red. It's not just a color, it's a feeling, a warning, a story in the sky. Through all this, the main point remains, the death of Jesus wasn't just about pain, it was about change, something shifted. Whether you believe in the spiritual part or just look at the science, there's a mark left on history. The eclipse theory is one piece of a big puzzle. It helps pull together records, faith and technology. It gives people a way to connect past with present. And even if we never prove every single part, the journey matters. Looking into the sky to learn about Earth, that's something humans have always done. What if the sky was trying to tell us something that day? Across time, people wrote about signs in the heavens. The Greeks, Romans, Chinese and Mayans, they all watched the stars. Eclipses were moments of fear and awe. Leaders made big decisions after seeing them. Battles were started or stopped. Kings were crowned or cast out. When that blood moon appeared, people might have thought it meant more than just a sky event. It could have been taken as a sign that something holy had happened, or something awful. That's what makes this moment so gripping. It's not just about one belief, it's about how humans connect to the sky. This deep dive into eclipses and Jesus' death isn't just for believers, it's for anyone who's curious. Anyone who wonders how stories survive for thousands of years. Anyone who's looked at the stars and felt small, but connected. As researchers keep digging, more questions show up. Could earthquakes mentioned in the Bible match Roman records? Could other signs in the Gospel have roots in natural events? That blend of wonder and proof drives more and more studies, and at the core it's all about connection. A moment in time, witnessed by people, remembered by books, and tracked by stars. That's the magic of this discovery. Not just a moon, not just a man, but a meeting of memory, mystery, and math. New technology helps paint a clearer picture, Sky mapping software, solar charts and eclipse models all add detail. They help date events, trace shadows and confirm stories. And every time a new piece is added, the whole puzzle gets a bit clearer. Still, no machine can explain belief. Faith lives in the space between facts. But when facts line up with faith, it sparks something deep. That's why this red moon matters. It lights a path between the old world and the new one. People still talk about it, in churches, schools and science labs. This idea won't fade, because whether it proves something or not, it makes us wonder. And wonder is where all great stories begin. The crucifixion wasn't just about one person, it echoed through time. And if the sky echoed too, if the stars marked that moment, then the story stretches even farther. Way back in ancient times, there was an event that people still talk about today. It wasn't just something written in an old book. It felt bigger, like the sky itself was trying to say something. People looked up and noticed something unusual happening. Darkness showed up in the middle of the day. That got folks thinking, what if the sky itself was marking a moment that changed everything? Long before phones, clocks or anything digital, people paid close attention to the sky. They watched stars flicker, tracked the moon's path and noticed the rise and fall of the sun. The sky was their calendar and their clock. They knew when something didn't feel right up there. That's why when the daylight turned into darkness, it wasn't something they just brushed off. It meant something, something big. This strange moment in the sky lines up with a powerful moment from the past, the death of Jesus. According to ancient texts, this happened during the Jewish festival called Passover. That festival always takes place in the spring and always during a full moon. Here's something interesting. Lunar eclipses, where Earth blocks the sunlight from hitting the moon, only happen when there's a full moon. Some people started wondering if that strange daytime darkness might have been a lunar eclipse. That would mean the sky wasn't reacting in a mysterious way. 
It was reacting in a real measurable way. And if that was true, maybe there was a way to figure out when exactly it happened. This is where the space experts at NASA step in. NASA is known for space missions and space stations, but they also look at the sky in ways most of us don't think about. They use powerful technology to study not just future space events, but also things that happened long ago. Their computers and math tools help them figure out what the sky looked like thousands of years ago. In the 1990s, they created models that could go backward in time and show when eclipses happened. These models are super accurate. They look at the movements of Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. They track how shadows move and how light bends. When scientists used those models to look around the time Jesus died, they found something surprising, a lunar eclipse that matched the time of the crucifixion. This discovery started new conversations. Historians became interested. People who study the Bible began asking more questions. Astronomers looked at the data with fresh curiosity. The whole thing turned into a bridge between science and faith. Two areas of thought that often stand apart were suddenly looking at the same piece of the puzzle. The Gospel texts, written a long time ago, mention the sky turning dark during Jesus' death. These aren't small notes or random lines. They are specific. They say darkness came over the land from about noon to three in the afternoon. That's not a few minutes. That's three full hours in the middle of the day. People don't forget something like that. This detail shows up in more than one book. Matthew, Mark and Luke all talk about it. They describe the same event with the same kind of timing. That kind of match matters. It tells us this was something people really noticed. It was strong enough, strange enough, and real enough that it got written down in more than one place by different people. Now think about this. Eclipses usually don't last for hours. They might create some dimming for a bit, but not long. That's what makes this event so unusual. It doesn't follow the usual rules. Some researchers think it might have been a lunar eclipse, while others suggest different ideas. Dust storms, cloud cover, or even something symbolic. But the timing, during a full moon and a major historical moment, makes it stand out. NASA's models show that a lunar eclipse did happen around that time. That means we might be looking at an event that is part faith story, part science clue. That's powerful. It makes people wonder what else could be learned if we used science to look at ancient moments. What else is hidden in plain sight? But what if that darkness wasn't just a feeling? What if it really happened? Imagine standing there, watching the sky go dark when the sun is supposed to be shining. Animals go quiet. People stop moving. Something in the air feels different. It's like the whole world is holding its breath. Now match that with a public event where someone deeply important is being punished. That kind of moment leaves a mark on history. It becomes more than just a tale. It turns into a shared memory. It connects people through time. Everyone from ancient writers to modern scientists becomes part of the same mystery. And instead of looking for ways to argue, they start looking for ways to understand. The idea that the sky remembers is both strange and beautiful. When the darkness came during that historic day, it was like the Earth itself paused. It didn't need words. It didn't need explanations. It just reacted. And people felt it. Using their models, NASA traced the skies back and found several eclipse events in that window of history. One of them, in particular, matches with what the texts describe. This discovery gives a possible date for when the crucifixion might have happened. It doesn't change what people believe, but it adds another layer. The story becomes more than a belief. It becomes a point where science and storytelling meet. And when they meet, something new is born. A fresh way to see something old. This journey isn't just about a date, it's about questions, big ones, like how much of history is written in the stars, how many other events left shadows on the moon or strange lights in the sky. If we follow those trails, what might we find? Each step in the search opens more doors. Scientists look at math, historians dig through records, people of faith reflect on meaning. They all move together in their own ways, toward the same goal understanding. It's not about proving something wrong or right. It's about looking deeper, asking more, following the clues that the universe quietly left behind. The sky doesn't forget. 
It keeps a record of everything, every eclipse, every flash, every movement. It's like a giant scroll stretched out above us. And sometimes when we look up, we catch a glimpse of the past. That glimpse doesn't erase faith. It doesn't replace belief. It adds to it. It makes the story richer, fuller, more connected. It brings people together across time, space and ideas. When the sky darkened during that ancient afternoon, it was more than just a moment. It was a message, a pause in the everyday, a mark on the timeline. And now, thousands of years later, we're still looking at it, still wondering. Curiosity drives the search, not doubt, not fear. Just the deep human need to know more. That need pushes people to build models, read old texts, study the stars. It pushes us to listen, to learn and to look closer. There might be more events like this, more times when the sky responded to something happening below. We just have to find them, and with each one we discover, we get a little closer to understanding not just history, but ourselves. The journey isn't finished, the questions keep coming, but that's the best part, because every time we ask, Every time we look up and wonder, we become part of the story too. Some folks spend their days looking at stars. Others flip through old pages in ancient books. But once in a while, their paths cross and something unexpected shows up. That's what happened when a bunch of smart minds started asking, could something out there in space connect to the exact day Jesus died? That sounds like something from a movie, but it's a real question some people are chasing with serious effort. This isn't just some random theory. There's data, there are old texts, there's math, and there's this moment in time where everything seems to click into place. The story begins with something strange. One of the oldest records we have from the Bible's Book of Luke mentions that when Jesus died, the sky went dark. It wasn't a storm and it wasn't night. It happened during the day, right around noon. And that darkness lasted for three full hours until mid-afternoon. Now, if you've ever seen the sun just disappear like that, you'd remember it. That's exactly what this story describes. People living through it must have been shaken to their core. This detail about the sun stopping its shine has puzzled people for ages. Some believe it was just a poetic way of showing the seriousness of that day. Others wonder if something in the sky actually caused that darkness. What kind of sky event could suddenly black out the daylight like that? Was it a solar eclipse or could something else have been going on? A group of scientists and scholars decided to find out. They weren't satisfied with guessing. They wanted hard facts. That's where astronomy came in. By using modern tools, computers and knowledge of how the planets and stars move, they tried to rewind the sky. The goal was simple figure out if anything unusual happened in the sky around the time of the crucifixion. But what if that darkness wasn't natural at all? What if it was something beyond science? Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.